Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Welcome back from the break. This is the second segment of Shabbat service. It will be part four in the uploaded version when it is it is posted. Um, this is for Waymaker Messianic Jewish and Christian Center USA. And this is the day that the Lord has made. We will be glad and rejoice in it. This is Saturday, October 2nd. 2021 on the Gregorian calendar and on the Hebrew calendar in the year 5782. It is Tishri 26. And welcome everybody back to the second segment of Shabbat service. In this segment, we are going to do the scriptures from the Brit Kadashah and we will be tying them into the Torah and the half Torah because Absolutely. Uh, they will definitely tie into there. We've actually discussed some of those verses uh, when we were discussing uh, creation. Of course, we are going to begin with um, the book of John, the first chapter. Um, so when we do the Brit Katasha readings. Before we do that, I want to make a few announcements. Uh, we do have live and in real time, meeting on Tuesday evening at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Please come join us. We would love to have you. Um, fellowship is so very important. And the, you can join by phone, you can join by web, or you can join by Wi-Fi data. Um, when I do post the announcement to to uh, the social media platforms. You can click on to the link for phone. Um, this is the list that freeconferencecall.com has given us. So when you're clicking on, that is definitely the list. Now, what what is not so, it says toll. All of it says toll. It's not a toll number. You're not gonna get charged for that. Um, because even, even the USA, I believe, has a, it says toll. And I've never paid anything um, to join. And I've used freeconferencecall.com for quite some time, uh, not just with our ministry, which we've been, we're on our second year of using it for our ministry, uh, but I've used it for college classes. So, um, and I've never had to pay. So you need to enter the phone number um, that is associated with your country. Um, I'd, I'd use the international number. I believe that's what you, you need to use um, that's listed because there's a there's an in-country number and then there's international. Um, so enter that and then it will prompt you to put in an access code. Um, and that access code is the same for everyone. So that makes the call free. So... You can join by website, you can click on there and it will bring you to, um, you just need to follow the prompts. It may ask you to download an app or also to download the web. It is perfectly safe. Uh, I've done it myself. Um, and I've, like I said, I've had a uh, free conference call.com on my computer for quite some time, uh, for quite a number of years, actually. So it is a very safe uh, platform to use. Um, so you can join that way when you, you know, when you come in on the web, um, there is a built in microphone. So, and also there's a chat room in there. I like freeconferencecall.com better than zoom. I just, I just do. Um, it, we can also have up to a thousand people, um, that can come on, uh, which is really nice, um, that we have that capacity. So that's a shout out for other people that have other specific ministries, um, whatever God has your calling, whether it's a praise and worship ministry, whether it's a writing ministry, whether you're an author, if you would like to have us host you on, on, on an evening, we'd be glad to do that. Uh, we have the ability to do an MP3 and an MP4 recording, and I've done that before. And then I've emailed both of those recordings to, to whoever we have been hosting. Uh, we've had writers on, we've had, um, praise and worship, uh, individuals on. Um, and so I've made the MP3 and MP4 recordings, emailed it to them and you can use it for however you want to. It's your, it's your recording. So it's our ministry's way of tithing into and promoting what you're doing for the kingdom of God. 
So that's my little um, statement on that. And if that's something that interests you, if you have a specific ministry um, that you're wanting to promote, whether it be writing, praise, praise and worship, um, please contact Pastor Noel or myself, and we'd be glad to work with you on that and set something up. Um, so that that can be done. And of course, you can certainly um, invite others as well, you know. So we do open that up. We have used freeconference.call.com for teaching purposes, for prayer, um, for, for praise and worship. We've, you know, for fellowship. It is so important that the body and Messiah come together, especially in these days when, when there's been so much separation and inability to come together. We do have an avenue uh, to be able to do that and to speak freely. Uh, we also speak on current events without, without censorship. So, And I say that because that, that is very true. And we need a place that we can actually, you know, talk about concerns and support one another. So feel free to come on in and join us because we do that very thing. So that is our, we, and we meet every Tuesday, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you can't make it right at that time, you can probably come in at 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time and we're still there. Um, pretty much so. Um, we're there pretty late. Um, so we, we may be there for hours, depending on what, you know, what we're discussing and what we get into. And um, I never put a time limit on, on, on anything. Cause if, if it, you know, there's sometimes that we cut it earlier, uh, but there's times that we've been there after midnight, midnight after midnight. Um, so depending on, you know, our discussion and we can get into some really good discussions. So, and, and some active prayer. We've done spiritual warfare. Uh, we lift people up um, in prayer requests. So just to shout out that invitation to anyone that would like to join us. And if you're having trouble accessing, please reach out to Pastor Noel or myself. We'd be glad to help you. Um, and yes, indeed, you can try accessing it before um, Tuesday night, you can access it anytime. The, the, what you're going to find, um, if you access, once you access it, it'll just say the host has not arrived yet and proceed to play music, uh, like waiting room music. Um, but, uh, at least you'll know that you can access it when the time comes. So that's all I'm going to say about our Tuesday evening. Uh, I, I did mention it in probably in greater detail in, in uh, the first segment. The other thing I want to mention that's going on this week is our Bi Bible study, which is ongoing. We have been going through the Messianic Jewish Family Bible, TLV, the Tree of Life version. And we are in the Brit Kadashah, deep into the Brit Kadashah, because we're going to be doing the book of Philippians this week, chapters one through four. So we're, we're, Get, we're moving along in the Brit Kadasha. So we began this um, well over, well, we've been in, in it more than a year. We're on our second year of going through the this version of the Bible, and we've taken our time going through it from Genesis. And we're going from Genesis to the end of Revelation. Um, and at this point this week, we're, we're at Philippians. So we are getting there. And it's been a journey. It's been a delight going through this version of the Bible. Um, so the archives are, are definitely all there on the social media platforms on and on YouTube. So if you've missed anything, which, which at this point you've missed quite a bit, I should say, uh, you can go back and start at the beginning if you you are interested in this version of the Bible. Uh, once we're completed this version of the Bible, we're going to probably get towards the end of December. We're, we're going to take a couple weeks and then begin another version of the Bible um, and start that from Genesis to Revelation as well. Um, so, and I'm, I'm really leaning more towards um, actually use, utilizing the English Standard Version as our next Bible study. So, um, so we may be doing that next. 
So with that being said, that's really all the announcements that I have. Um, it's a lot quieter than the month of September was when there was something going on almost uh, a lot of times daily um, because we, we had the fall feasts, which was really a, a very active month. So this is a little bit more quieter um, this month, but um, yet very powerful messages um, when we when we're looking at the creation, when we're looking at you know, having just done the Torah portion of Bereshit, it, there's a lot, there's a lot involved in, in this uh, segment. So even though we don't have uh, a lot of, a lot of events going on this month, we have a very packed um, Shabbats uh, with, with the information with, you know, from the Bible. So with that being said, we are going to begin uh, with prayer. And once again, I don't want to do anything without the Ruach HaKadosh presence and being in the presence of, of God. Havina Mokeno, our Father, our King, we thank you. We thank you, first and foremost, for the breath that you have given us. For you are the creator of all life. And, and the breath that is in our lungs comes directly from you. You gave us this life. Help us to honor you with this life. Help us, Father, send your Holy Spirit to guide the remainder of Shabbat service, to guide us, to lead us, to direct us, to teach us, to open the eyes of our heart, the ears of our heart, that we may be in tune to what it is that you want us to totally understand and grasp and digest because this is our spiritual food. We thank you. We thank you for this word, this powerful word that you have for us. May it nourish us spiritually that we walk with you and we fellowship with you every day, not just today, but every day. You are a part of us. You made us in your image. We're part of you. We love you, Father God. We thank you for everything that you have done for us. In the mighty name of Yeshua, Jesus, amen and amen. So with that being said, I am going to, um, we're going to call to worship first and foremost. The high priest used to sound the shofar to call the people to worship. And we're going to do that right now. <laughs> to pause it now because of copyright infringements. I cannot include music in this part of the uploads. Um, so I'm going to pause it for you to go listen to some praise and worship music. If you're following along on social media, you will see actually uh, music posts. Um, I post I post songs before the Shabbat postings, um, ones that I, I feel are highly anointed and, and appropriate for, for our session, for our, our Shabbat services. Um, and I will post songs after the Shabbat posting. So the ones that are after are usually meant, are actually meant for this segment, this half of Shabbat. So if you're not sure what you want to listen to, um, Absolutely, uh, they are there on on the four social media platforms. And just to remind you, you can find us on MeWe. You can find us on Gab. You can find us on USA Life, and you can find us on Facebook. We are Waymaker Messianic Jewish and Christian Center USA, and we are on all four platforms. So all of this will be uploaded on all four platforms as well. So, and there, there are those that are on my email list. They get, they get the whole thing in an email. So, um, 
so there's different different ways that Shabbat is 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 distributed as well for those that um, are tuning in on social media platforms and and such. Amen. God's word will get through one way or the other. <laughs> he will make a way when there seems to be no way. Amen. Amen. So we are going to begin with the Brit Kadasha readings, and we are going to do John chapter 1, verses 1 through 18. The Word becomes flesh. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. This is Yeshua. And the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. All things are made through him and apart from him. Nothing was made that has come into being. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overpowered it. Amen. There came a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify about the light so that through him everyone might believe. He was not the light, but he came to bear witness concerning the light, the true light coming into the world gives light to every man. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, but the world did not know him. And sadly, much of the world does not know him today. And This is our job as the children of God to make him known. He came to his own, but his own did not receive him. And again, that is still in the works as well. But whoever did receive him, those trusting in his name to these, he gave the right to become children of God. They were not born, I'm sorry, they were born not of a bloodline, nor of human desire, nor of man's will, but of God. And the word became flesh and tabernacled among us. We looked upon his glory, the glory of the one and only from the Father, full of grace and truth. John testifies about him. He cried out, saying, This is he of whom I said, The one who comes after me is above me because he existed before me. Out of his fullness we have all received grace on top of grace. Torah was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Yeshua, the Messiah. No one has ever seen God, but the one and only God in the Father's embrace has made him known. And that is the first reading from the Brit Kadashah. And the second one is Colossians chapter 1, verses 1 through 23. Greetings, Paul, an emissary of Messiah Yeshua by God's will, and Timothy, our brother, to the Kedeshim, the faithful brothers and sisters in Messiah who are at Colossae. Grace and shalom to you from God our Father, thanksgiving and prayer. We always thank God the Father of our Lord Yeshua, the Messiah, whenever we pray for you. For we heard of your trust in Messiah Yeshua and the love you have for all the Kedashim because of the hope stored up for you in heaven. You heard before about this hope in the true message of the good news that has come to you. In all the world, this good news is bearing fruit and growing just as it has in you since you first heard it and came to truly know God's grace. You learned it from Epaphras our dearly loved fellow slave, who is a faithful servant of Messiah on our behalf. He also made clear to us your love in the Ruach. For this reason also, ever since we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you. We keep asking God that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord to please him in all respects, bearing fruit in every good work, 
and growing in the knowledge of God, we pray that you may be strengthened with all the power that comes from his glorious might. For you to have all kinds of patience and steadfastness, with joy we give thanks to the Father who qualified you to share in the inheritance of the Kedoshim and the light. He rescued us from the domain of darkness, brought us into the kingdom of the Son whom he loves. In him we have redemption, the release of sins. Ben Elohim is supreme. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by him all things were created in heaven and on earth. The seen and the unseen, whether thrones or angelic powers or rulers or authorities, all was created through him and for him. He exists before everything, and in him all holds together. He is the head of the body, his community. He is the beginning of the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in all things. For God was pleased to have him, to have all his fullness dwell in him and through him to reconcile all things to him, making peace through the blood of his cross, whether things on earth or things in heaven. Once you were alienated from God and hostile in your attitude by wicked deeds, but now he has reconciled you in Messiah's physical body through death in order to present you holy, spotless, and blameless in his eyes. If indeed you continue in the faith, established and firm, not budging from the hope of the good news that you have heard. This good news has been proclaimed throughout all creation under heaven, and I, Paul, have become its servant. And that's the second set of scriptures. And as you see, this ties in to creation because Yeshua was there at the beginning. Yeshua is also who redeemed us from the original sin and reversed the curse. And all that call on his name and believe on him, and are born again and saved, shall not see eternal damnation or eternal death, but be redeemed, reconciled to the Father, and have the gift of eternal life. And the third set of scriptures, we're going to read the whole first chapter of Hebrews 1 through 14 verses. Um, chapter 1, superiority of the Son. At many times and in many ways, God spoke long ago to the fathers through the prophets. In these last days, he has spoken to us through a Son, whom he appointed heir of all things, and through whom he, through whom he created the universe. The sun is the radiance of his glory and the imprint of his being, upholding all things by his powerful word. When he had made purification for our sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Thus he became as far above the angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. For to which of the angels did God ever say, You are my son? Today I have become your father, and again I will be to him a father, and he will be to me a son. And again, when he brings the firstborn into the world, he says, let all the angels of God worship him. And regarding the angels, he says, he makes his angels winds and his servants a flame of fire. But regarding the son, he says, your throne, O God, is forever and ever and a scepter of uprightness is the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated lawlessness. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness above your companions. And in the beginning, Adonai, you laid the foundations of the earth, and the heavens are the works of your hands. They shall pass away, but you remain, and they will all wear out like clothing, and like a robe you will roll them up. And like clothing, they will be changed. But you are the same, and your years shall never end. But to which of the angels has he ever said, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet? Are they not all ministering spirits sent out for service to those about to inherit salvation? Yeshua 
is king and lord and he is he is always going to be the king he is our king and we're going to come to the final scripture readings from the Brit Kadasha. And this is the book of Revelation, chapter 22. We're going to be reading 6, verses 6 through 21. Yeshua is coming. He said to me, these words are trustworthy and true. And I, the God of the spirits of the prophets, has sent his angel to show his servants what must happen soon. Behold, I am coming soon. How fortunate is the one who keeps the words of the prophecy of this book. I, John, am the one hearing and seeing these things. And when I heard and saw them, I fell down to worship at the feet of the angel showing me these things. But he tells me, see that you do not do that. I am a fellow servant with you and your brothers, the prophets and those keeping the words of this book. Worship God. We are to bow to no one but, but to God. Absolutely. Then he tells me, do not seal up the words of the prophecy of this book, for the time is near. Let the evil do doers still do evil, and the filthy still be fil filthy, and the righteous still do righteousness, and the holy still be holy. Behold, I am coming soon, and my reward is with me to pay back each one according to his deeds. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. How fortunate are those who wash their robes so that they may have the right to see the tree of life and may enter through the gates into the city. Outside are the dogs and the sorcerers and the sexually immoral and the murderers and the idolaters and everyone who loves and practices falsehood. I, Yeshua, have sent my angel to testify these things to you for my communities. I am the root and the offspring of David, the bright and morning star. I am the Ruach. And the, the Ruach and the bride say, come. And let the one who hears say, come. Let the one who is thirsty come. And let the one who wishes freely take the water of life. I testify to everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book. If anyone adds to them, God shall add to him the plagues that are written in this book. And if anyone takes away from the words of the book of the prophecy, God shall take away his share in the tree of life and the holy city, which are written in this book. The one giving testimony to these things says, yes, I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Yeshua. May the grace of the Lord Yeshua be with all. That is the end of the Brit Kadasha readings. So just to tie this all in, we're going to review. We're going to recap some things here. The word Bereshit, as we said, was the Torah portion, uh, means in the beginning or at the start or at the head of all things. Um, so we know um, that's where we began, where, where there was no world and God created the world. He began the world. He created the world. He birthed the world into existence. And all that is in the world. So we saw um, the creation of, you know, the creation uh, and how God spoke it all into existence. How utterly amazing Adonai is. So, and, and we went over that pretty, pretty much. So I'm just going to... Um, just do a really quick briefing on this. So we saw um, creation, the creation in six days. And we know that the seventh day was sanctified as a day of rest, Shabbat. And God gave that to us as an example. And we also see how um, Adam was created out of the dust. You know, man was made in God's image not in angels' images. And when it is stated, let us make man in, let us make man in 
our image as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We see um, Adam being given dominion. You know, man, mankind was given dominion over everything of the earth. Adam named everything that God had created. And there was not a partner for Adam, so God created Eve out of the rib of Adam, so he could have a helpmate as well. So, and actually, Adam referred to her as Isha, and they were made Basar Achad, one flesh, through the very first marriage ceremony on the earth. So that was. They were they were made joined together through through the rib of Adam. Woman was created, so woman was woman and man were created as a pair, and God created male and female pairs of the animals as well, and that is creation perfect creation. Then as we move forward, we see uh, the serpent, Satan, uh, represented by the serpent and what he did and how the fall of man, of the first Adam, occurred. We see how deception is, how the devil knows the word of God, but can, can actually twist the words so we need to be aware that there's you know there's there's a lot of that that goes on today in our world i mean if it went on at the beginning of time you can believe you know we're in the end days that it's going on big time now so yeshua is mentioned in genesis 3 uh when adonai stated i will put enmity between the woman's seed and your seed you know and his heel will crush your head and he was referring to Yeshua so that was a and that made the devil panic because the devil didn't know the devil did not know when that would happen and um, how that was going to happen at that point it was stated and the devil knew you know God definitely had the upper hand and always will have the upper hand um, Satan is a created image, you know, of God. Um, he's not created in the image of God. God created the angels. God created everything. So um, Satan did not create himself. He became who he was because he rebelled against God. And he was stripped of his angelic being. Kicked out of heaven forever. If you want to try to destroy God, you're not, you're not going to go very far. God is the creator of all things, and he is in control. He is absolutely in control of all things. Do you think even now, as we see all this wickedness going on, that Abba Father doesn't know exactly what's going on? And I, the devil, the devil um, should be concerned because he's he's already been defeated. But he's just trying to pull humanity down with him. And he has succeeded in pulling a lot of people down with him. Sad to say. Hell was not made for humanity. It was made for the devil and the third of the angels that rebelled against God. However, there are people in hell. People that serve the evil one. And that is a reality. And they will be there. So what happened here in the garden was the original sin and Adam and Eve were thrust out of paradise, out of the garden of Eden. And they were meant, made to struggle. They were, they were, their glorified bodies were changed into what we're born into, the flesh that dies. So, and then when we look towards the end of the Torah. Uh, we looked at the genealogy. Well, first of all, we looked at um, the two sons that were born to Adam and Eve, Cain and Abel, and what jealousy 
what jealousy did and hatred for for one uh he murdered his brother and the blood cried out to adonai those that do evil evil deeds you, you, you might think you're doing it in darkness that other human beings don't know what's going on however god knows everything you can't hide a thing from god so whether you're doing it in darkness or not god knows and it will be eventually revealed it's already revealed to god god doesn't miss anything so cain was banished from his family And he had a mark put on him so no one would kill him because he cried out to God that this his iniquity was too great to bear. The people would, would rise up against him and kill him. So God did put a mark on him so he would not be murdered. And then we see that Seth was born. And we see the genealogy in chapter 5. And then as we're ending the Torah portion, uh, we're talking about Noah. You know, the, the world had gone bad. We've had the Nephilim here, the devil, uh, the, de the devil and his minions were, were corrupting the earth at that point. Um, the third, the Nephilim, the fallen angels were taking uh, women, human women, uh, creating races of giants. And the only incorrupt flesh at that point was Noah and his family, and God was planning at that point to destroy mankind from the face of earth. And then we went on to the half Torah, and we see, um, we, we take it back also to creation. You know, God declared um, that his creative program for the world included a special mission for his people, Israel, to be the light of the nations. Israel is a nation called to open eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison, prisoners that sit in darkness. For those that don't know Yeshua, we are all called to bring people to the light. The, the light of the world is Yeshua. We need to bring people to that knowledge. And the other part of this, too, is prophetic that, you know, we will sing a new song to our God. Yeshua is the only one, the only Jewish person that has inspired the nations to forsake their idols and sing such praises to the Lord. Moreover, the rejection of Yeshua is the cause of the present spiritual blindness. And we, we need to uh, pray for those that have not accepted Yeshua. In that day, all of Israel shall be saved in God's purpose of making them a nation of priests and kings will finally be fulfilled when they accept that their Redeemer is Yeshua. The veil will be removed. The scales will fall off of their eyes and the truth will be revealed. And that is happening. Um, and then we talk about Yeshua being the word of God and it, through him, everything was created. And he, through him, um, the promised seed was delivered to Israel the son of the father, full of grace and truth. Tragically, he was rejected, um, but this temporary rejection will soon end when all Israel will turn to him and be saved. Until that time, the offer is still held out to all people to personally receive Yeshua as their savior and become saved, born again, becoming Part of the family of God makes one a partaker of the original covenant blessings given to Israel as well. So just to bear that in mind. And then we looked at the millennial, you know, well, actually after the millennial reign where, where um, Yeshua is coming, the Ruach and the bride say come and let the one who hears say come. The one who is thirsty come, let the one who wishes freely 
take the water of life. So he says, Yeshua says, I am coming soon. So Bo Yeshua come and may the grace of our Lord Yeshua be with everyone, be with everyone. He is our Savior, our Redeemer. He has reversed the curse that was occurred through Adam, the first Adam, the second Adam undid it all. And the devil is not happy. So he's out there deceiving the multitudes. And there are many wolves in sheep's clothing. So be careful. Be careful who you listen to. Be careful whose report you accept. There is truth and there is false. There's honesty and there's deceit. Draw close to the one who created you, to Adonai. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for this powerful word. We thank you for everything that you did. You had a plan. When, when, when you saw Adam and Eve fail, you had a plan already made. You knew you were going to defeat the evil one. You knew he was up to something when you when he was kicked out of heaven. You knew that he couldn't he couldn't leave Adam and Eve alone. And yes, they did fail. They're human and they failed, but you love humanity so much that you gave your only son to redeem us. Shua, thank you. Thank you for doing that for us because we could not do it on our own. And it is through you and you alone. You are the way, the truth, and the life. And no one, no one will come to the Father except through you. And you made that path very clear, very clear cut. There's no U-turns. There's no Y-turns. There, there's no fork in the road. It's a clear cut path through you. Let not the world be deceived. There's not many paths to to become a child of God. Not everybody's a child of God. You must be born again. We thank you that it was you that loved us so much. That was love. Love that we can't even imagine because of the things that you endured for us. Thank you. Thank you, Yeshua. You are King of Kings. You are Lord of Lords. You are now. You always will be forever and ever. Amen. And in the mighty name of Yeshua, we say this. Amen and Amen. We're going to come back with the altar call. And then we will also then do Holy Communion after that and then close out Shabbat service for this week.